Welcome to Code with Vinay and in this video I'll tell you how you can display text in color inside the terminal or the console window. Using this technique I am about to tell you, you can make your console program more attractive and usable. For example, you can display your errors in red, success messages in green, etc. You can also use this technique to take your pattern programs to the next level. There is one caveat though and that is this will not work in BlueJ as the terminal in BlueJ is not a full-fledged terminal emulator. If you are using any other editor like VS Code, IntelliJ IDEA, etc. or the command prompt, you are good to go. Also, if you are using Windows, everything will be working by default if you are using version 10 and above. So without further ado, let's dive in. Now, what I am about to tell you can be achieved with the help of external libraries, but we will not be going on that route. We will use a basic method which doesn't require any installation of any library. We will be using something called ANSI escape codes. And you can get detailed information about it by using Google. Let me show you to you how. So, I'll search for ANSI escape codes and we'll follow the first Wikipedia link. And it will show you the, the regular things, the history and all. And if we scroll a bit, there's a separate section of colors. And once we go there, we'll see the details. Now you'll notice that here everything is a bit complex. And that is why I'm making a video to simplify this for you. Our idea is that we want to display text in color inside the terminal window. So now on your screen, there's a simple program, a simple hello world program. There's a class color in console. Inside that there is a method main. And then we are simply saying system.out.println hello world. And if we execute it, you know what will happen. It will just display hello world. Now, as you can see right now, hello world is being displayed in simple black color. That is the default color scheme. And we want to change it into color. ANSI escape codes work just like your regular escape sequences. So the usage is also similar. Like if we go over here inside the println and I say slash t. Now, if I run the program again, you will see that computer is not going to display slash t. Instead, what happens is that it shifts one tap position. In the same way, ANSI color codes also work. Now I'm going to replace the escape sequence slash t by an ANSI color code. So we'll go over here. We'll give a space so that hello and world do not stick to each other. And then we'll give the ANSI color code. So we'll say slash u 001b. Now 001b is actually the hexadecimal equivalent of 27 and 27 stands for escape. So slash 001b stands for escape. This will be followed by a box bracket and then we'll giving a code. Right now I'm giving 31 and then that will be followed by the character M. Now this looks odd, but when we run it, you'll see something interesting. So let me run it for you. And you can see that the word world is now in red. And if I go over here and I say semicolon one, and I again run this program, see what happens. You get it in bold red. So it is all about codes. You have codes for regular colors, codes for bold or bright colors, and you have codes for background colors also. But as you can notice, using Codes like this is very cumbersome in the real programming. Like if you want to display something in red, you are not going to write this or you can't memorize this. So we have a better way of doing this. And that better way is to store all these codes in variables or rather constants because they're not going to change. So what we can do is we can go over here and we can say final static string red equal to and we'll move the color code from within the string to inside the variable and now if i want to make this hello world in color we'll say red plus and if i run the program for you again you can see it is still displaying the text in color that is in the color red but it is more pleasant to look at now let us go into the detail of this line. 
we are saying final static string red equals and within double quotes we are giving the code we are making this the constant that's why we are saying final final means that this red cannot change within the program and obviously this is not going to change static means that this will come into existence as soon as the program is loaded into the memory and then it will remain there so that it can be used by any other method in the program string obviously because the color code is a string and red is the name of our constant now just like the declaration of the constant red we need a declaration for other colors also and i'm not going to waste your time so what i'll do is i'll write all the colors and then we'll continue with the video so here is the list of all the colors black red green and so on then we have the brighter brighter versions bright black bright red and so on and then there is something known as a reset now please understand once you make the color red it will remain red till you change it to some other color or you use reset so that's why reset is required i'll show you how so we'll go to main again and i'll copy this println and we'll paste it twice i'll change this red into blue so the first println will display hello world in red the second println will display hello world in blue and then i am removing the color altogether so if i run the code again the first line is in red the second line is, is in blue and the third line is also in blue that is once you give an, an escape sequence for a color that will hold till you change it or you reset it now changing it means that i again have to give the code manually and if i say reset it will just revert back to your default color in our in my case it, it will be the shade of black so if i run it again hello world in red hello world in blue and then the hello world in the default shade now changing background color is just like changing the foreground color we just have to use the desired background color code let me show you this with the help of an example so what i'll do is i'll copy one of these lines i'll paste it and then instead of the foreground blue we'll say background and we'll choose one of the background colors let's say i'm choosing green now if i run the code notice what happens it changes into green but this green continues we can remove this if we want by just saying reset at the end so if i add reset over there i run the code again you'll see that that problem is resolved i'll be sharing these codes in the description of this video so that you can use it in your own program a student of mine used this technique to display the US flag in color and the result was awesome. So if you use this technique for something interesting, do not forget to share this in the comments below. Thank you. That's all for now. Your feedback is valuable to me. I want to make sure that my videos are clear and helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions for improvement, please don't hesitate to leave a comment or send me a message.